Hello everybody, this is the Structures Guy. Today we're talking about the simplified structural engineering of Burj Khalifa. Located in Dubai, UAE, Burj Khalifa stands tall at 829.8 meters or about 2722 feet from the bottom to the tip or about 11 Boeing 747-8 airplanes stacked tail to tip or roughly 2.5 Eiffel Towers. Construction started in 2004 and lasted about 6 years when it was completed in 2010 and costed about 1.5 billion dollars. The building held the tallest building in the world title for nearly 10 years and is expected to hold it for some time as the construction for Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia has stopped in 2018. Burj Khalifa also holds other six world records and have won many awards. It is an understatement to say that the design of this building is the state of the art. Various technologies and innovations in the structural design methods were used to make this superstructure both efficient and robust. Burj Khalifa has a floor area of 309 thousand meters squared or about 3.3 million feet squared with 163 floors above the ground. The building contains 57 elevators, 55 of which are single deck elevators and two are double deck elevators. Those elevators travel at 10 meters per second or 32.8 feet per second and they have the world longest travel distance from the lowest to the highest stop where the observation deck is located. This trip takes about one minute. Burj Khalifa is used for hotels, commercial spaces, entertainment spaces, offices, and residential spaces. The building was built using mostly glass, steel, aluminum, and reinforced concrete. The initial concept for the design of Burj Khalifa originated from the heminal Khalis flower and spiral minarets that are an important part of the Islamic architecture. Both of these have a form of the letter Y and a triangular shape being wider at the bottom but narrower at the top. This structural system for this megastructure is called the Patrist Core. This new structural system allows for a drastic increase in heights. The structural system consists of three wing structures anchored to a strong hexagonal central core. Each wing is buttressed to the other to provide a highly stable system. The central concrete core provides the torsional resistance for the building, while the wings provide the shear resistance and increase moment of inertia. The three wings attached to the central core have four bays each, forming a Y-shaped plan. At every seventh level, one outer bay is removed from one of the wings in an upward spiraling pattern as the tower spirals up, reducing the tower's mass and narrowing the building as the height increases. This buttress core also helps to reduce the wind pressure on the tower, making this system simple and easier to build. Within the wings, corridor walls extend from the hexagonal core to almost the end of the wing and end on thick walls named hammerhead walls. Those corridor walls and hammerhead walls behave similar to webs and flanges of an eye beam to resist wind shear and moments. With the addition of flat plate floor construction and perimeter columns, the entire structural system of Burj Khalifa acts like a single unit creating a tower that acts as a one giant cantilever beam fixed at the ground. The setbacks are achieved by aligning columns above with the walls below to provide a smooth road path. This enables construction to proceed without the normal delays associated with column transfers. At each setback, the building width changes. The advantage of tower stepping and shaping in is in essence to confuse the wind. Wind vortices can never sufficiently combine because the wind encounter a different building shape at each tier. The bottom three quarters of the tower is mostly a reinforced concrete structural system with a reinforced concrete core with reinforced concrete shear wall panels. 
The concrete used for Burj Khalifa is high performance concrete with high compressive strength. However, the top coat of the building known as Spire is made using 4000 tons of structural steel with a diagonally braced lateral system for the spire. The spire was constructed inside the building and then lifted using a hydraulic pump. The spire is integral to the overall design, creating a sense of completion for the superstructure. The exterior cladding is made of reflective glazing with aluminum and textured with stainless steel. There are about 26,000 glass panels, each individually hand cut were used in the exterior cladding of Burj Khalifa. The tower is supported by a large reinforced concrete mat foundation, which is supported by reinforced concrete piles below. The mat is 3.7 meters thick or about 12 feet thick and was constructed in four separate pools totaling 12,500 cubic meters of concrete or about 16,350 cubic yards. There are 192 reinforced concrete piles that are 1.5 meters in diameter, which is about 5 feet, and 43 meters long, or about 141 feet. A high density, low permeability concrete was used in the foundation as well as a cathodic protection system under the mat to minimize any determinal effects from the corrosive chemical in the local groundwater. There are a lot of aspects of this amazing building I was not able to discuss as I wanted to go over the basics of it. There is a lot to unpack and learn from this building and one thing for sure is that Burj Khalifa is an amazing accomplishment, absolutely outstanding design and a gorgeous looking architecture even though it was completed more than 10 years ago. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. See you next time!